Hello, my name is Isabella Damiani, and today I'm going to be walking you through a, an overview of what a middle school agri-science fair report should look like. So let's start at the beginning. First, you're going to have your title as indicated here. In this research report, the title is Determining the Relationship Between the Implementation of Basin Management Action Plans and the Nitrogen Levels in the Springs. It is short, it is concise, and it tells us exactly what the project is about. Also, on the first page, you will have to enter this information. You will enter the student researchers. If the division is an even number, there are two researchers. If the division is a odd number, there is only one. You will enter your chapter, your state, your category, and your division. So now moving on. The first part of the report is the important section, and you have to answer two distinct questions. Why is the topic important to the agriculture industry, and what problem does the investigation solve for agriculture? So looking at the first question, you need to provide one clear, detailed paragraph that answers this question, and this section is worth 10 points. So, for example, you see here, without water, agriculture would have no crops and no livestock, no product to ship off to stores, and nothing to put on the shelves for consumers to purchase. So it's talking about why is this topic important to agriculture? And then what problem does the investigation solve for agriculture? This is where you go more into detail about what specific problem that this experiment, this project, is trying to answer. And again, you're going to provide one clear, detailed paragraph to answer here. And again, the entire important section is worth 10 points. So that's the importance. Remember to answer why is this topic important to the agriculture industry and what problem does the investigation solve for agriculture. The second section is others' work. In this section, you want to clearly detail what information currently exists concerning the research project. You will reference where the information was found, for example, on a website, on a book, in an article, etc. And those are listed, and then a paragraph written by the student researcher clearly describes the reference and the information is provided for each pub publication used. And this section is worth 15 points. So let's look at some examples. For example, here's a website listed that these students used, followed by some information about what this website provided. Additionally, another website is produced. This is an EDIS article from UF, and it is a PDF. So this is an article, whereas this is a website. And this shows the article discusses different agencies, has some dates, has information about how it informed the study. And what's really important in the Others Work section is that these sources do not have to 100% align with the study, but they do have to support it in one form or another, potentially different variables. How does this impact and contribute to the study? But it doesn't have to be exactly what the study is doing, which is really important to note. So, so far we've talked about the importance and the other's work, and that's a total of 25 points so far. So now we're going to move on to the materials and methods, also known as materials and procedure. So this is clearly written to enable others to replicate the study and the results. It is written in first person and encompasses all the materials required. If used, any statistical procedures are included, and this section is worth 10 points. So for example, the materials can be listed in bullets with quantities. And we need to make sure you include safety materials such as goggles, aprons, gloves, etc. But you don't need to list all the knit and grit, including papers, pencils, paper clips, computer, internet connection. You don't need to go that overboard. Just a list of bullets with the quantities. So how many gloves did you use? Did you use one pair? Did you use 10 pairs? How many buckets did you use? How much water? How much soil? How much wood? How many nails, etc. And then moving to the methods, which is also known as the procedure. 
And this can be a step-by-step -step process of the procedure. So you could chunk it into sections. For example, subheadings might be construction of the experiment, how you built it, have step-by-steps in there. And then your data collection, how often did you record data? How often did you measure your plants? How often did you change the filter? All these different things. And then another section could be data analysis. What statistical procedures did you use to analyze your data? So we've covered the, three for the first three sections, the importance, the other's work, and the materials and methods. So let's keep going. The next section is the hypothesis and the anticipated results. In this section, student researchers clearly state the hypothesis or its anticipated results. And this section is worth only five points. So it can be really straightforward, really short, and really simple, honestly. So you can use, potentially use this statement if-then statements. For example, if I water plants, then they will grow. If I walk my dog, he will be happy. If I take a shower, I will be, then I will be clean. Using if-then statements. And anticipated results are just what you think will happen, what the student thinks will happen. For example, the trials that contain the correct amount of fertilizer will have the highest percentage of growth and largest yield. So it's just saying what you think will happen, the anticipated results. And now let's talk about the actual results. So in contrast to the anticipated results, which are worth only five points, the full results are worth about 20 points. So that's a pretty big discrepancy. In the results, the results of the project are summarized. Trends and relationships are clearly addressed, but no conclusions are made. So no assumptions, no saying why did this happen, only stating the facts. And they can come in forms of tables and charts. However, if tables and charts are used, they need to contain all the in required information, including titles, axes labels and keys if necessary. It is vitally important that the results contain a written explanation of every table and every chart. So let's have an example. Here is a graph depicting plant height. You can see that the date axis, the x-axis, is labeled with the dates. And the height is on the y-axis indicated with which units, centimeters and the blue bars represent the plant height. And below is a short paragraph describing what the graph represents. In the above graph, plant height was tracked over the course of 12 days. Date is indicated on the x-axis and height is indicated on the y-axis. Plant height increased from three centimeters on the first day to five centimeters on the 12th day. So it's straightforward, no assumptions, no saying why did this happen, simply stating what happened, the facts. Okay, let's keep going. So now let's talk about the discussion. So in the discussion, you need to answer two questions, just like in the important section. You answer, what do the results of the study mean? And how are they related to what others found in the others work section? So first, let's look at this first question. What do the results of the study mean? And you need to provide a clear, detailed answer here. This is where you talk about what do they mean? Why did this happen? So the results of this study indicated that there was an effect between the use of fertilizer and non-fertilizer on the growth of plants. So it indicated it. Plants that received a 10-10-10 fertilizer had the highest growth and lowest leaching of fertilizers through the soil profile. And it continues on to talk about how 30-30-30 was different and how the one with no fertilizer was different as well. It simply states the differences and says why this happened. This means that fertilizer is helpful for plant growth, but that adding too much fertilizer may not improve plant growth and could cause pollution through the soil profile which may leach into the groundwater. So it uses words such as may, 
may not. This means, so it's all talking about that kind of stuff. And then let's look at this second question. How are they related to what others found in the others work section? So this is where you refer back all the way up to this section. And ideally in this section, the more sources you have, the better. Right now, I'm just demonstrating an introduction of what it could be. Ideally, this section should be much longer, include examples from websites, books, articles, and as many different sources as you can find. So going back to the discussion. So in this section, the purpose is to be considered the results and what it means section in relation to what others have found previously. Does the work that you found support their work? Were your findings different than others' work? And then explain why they were different, why they weren't different. It would be a great idea to address each list in another's work or to combine and address in separate paragraphs. So this is where it comes into having more sources in the others' work section contributes even greater to your discussion section. Okay, so now we're at our conclusions. So our conclusion clearly states what should be done and or changed as a result of the research. It states what the next steps are to continue the research, and this section is worth 10 points. So the conclusions need to address the original topics in investigation. They need to be within the scope of the study, meaning don't jump to conclusions and don't make more out of the study than what should be drawn from the data. For example, if you surveyed 30 students at your school and they chose the blueberries over the strawberries, you should not conclude that humans like blueberries more than strawberries. You might conclude that the participants in the study preferred blueberries over strawberries, or you might go as far to say the younger population at your school preferred blueberries over strawberries. However, making the jump that everyone, all humans, prefer this is a bit far-reaching. So don't make any large assumptions. Make sure they're specific to what your study is about. Cool. And we're almost there. So our last two sections are summary and acknowledgement. The summary is two to three paragraphs describing the study. It describes why the students chose to conduct the study, why the study is important to the agriculture industry, how the study was conducted, what was found, and how the results apply within the agriculture industry. This is basically just a summary of everything you've already written, and it's worth five points. So don't introduce anything new here. Whatever you say in the summary should have already been said in the previous areas of the report. And lastly, the acknowledgments. This is where you'll have either a detailed list or a paragraph which acknowledges anyone who assisted with any aspect of the project and how they helped. So this could be the FFA advisor, any companies that you worked with, any organizations that assisted in testing, constructing the experiment, anything like that. And this section is worth five points. So let's click, quickly review through all of them one more time. So you start with your cover page where you have your title and all your information on the bottom. Then you will have your importance, which answers the two questions. Why is this topic important to the agriculture industry? And what problem does the investigation solve for agriculture? And then you have your other's work, where the more sources you have, the better, and from a variety of sources. You'll have your source indication, followed by a paragraph describing what that source was about and how it contributes to the study. And remember, it doesn't have to exactly relate to your study, but it does have to relate at some degree. And then you have your materials and methods, where your materials can be a bulleted list with enough detail, but not too much detail, followed by your methods, which can be chunked into major portions. Then you will have your short and concise hypothesis and anticipated results, followed by your full results, which have charts and tables with full explanations that are written, fully labeled tables and charts. 
Then you have your discussion, which answers the two questions, what do the results of this study mean, and how are they related to what others found in the others work section, followed by your conclusions, where this is where you make your assumptions, but you don't make too far-fetching assumptions. Keep it concise and specific. Then you have your summary, which is just a two to three paragraph overview of everything you've already said. And lastly, your acknowledgments, where you say thank you. I hope this video was helpful and that this aids you in writing your reports. Good luck and remember, have fun.